let's move to the acrylic markers. So Amazon, um, Amazonas, Amazonas light? I don't know. I know Amazon <laughs> or Amazonian, but how do you pronounce this? A Amazonas, Am Amazonas, God knows. Anyway, so shake, shake as always, and always check how the color looks here. This is the four millimeter one. So all of them come like that and you just need to prepare them and you just push on the nib gently until you start seeing the paint come to the tip. There we go, it's slowly happening now. I don't think I had four millimeters before. This is my first one. So it should be good. So there we go. Okay, let's try it. Oh, very nice, super opaque and beautiful color at it as well. Love it. very good I mean super close match to the cap pretty much the same thing and then we have metallic gold same thing I'll need to just wake them up a little bit <laughs> and then we'll do the swatches I just realized this is a German art supplies whole or heavy on that side because the only items that are not is the the tombos and the uniposcas i believe i'm not sure where uniposcas are made but the molotovs and all the watercolors they were um, um made in germany so the gold is interesting it's actually on a green side different to the uniposca ones so that's interesting and then next up we have burgundy so the the bigger nibs are obviously great for large areas to fill them quickly then we have the two millimeters and that looks like this so the same kind of tip just smaller and that will be obviously a thinner line but still not fine so slightly thinner color stunning that's the thing with the molotovs the colors are very contemporary and if you an artist who loves a contemporary color palette molotovs are just the go-to so here we go I think I might I might make a mark next to it just to show the thickness of the nib like that and then we have uniposcus so this one is that gives us a width between 1.8 and 2.5 millimeters so it should be a thinner line than this one So the nib is shaped slightly different so I guess if you go right on the tip you can get this line and then on the side you get a bigger line. Um, that's probably how you can achieve different thicknesses. The color is lovely. So I'll do two lines here just to show that you can, or two dots rather, the thickness that you can achieve. And finally bronze so same thing it looks like there might be two balls it sounds different yeah there's two balls in these ones versus one ball so probably for the metallic markers they went with two balls and although the marker looks bigger 
the tip is actually smaller so here you can achieve 0 0.9 between that and 1.3 millimeters and this one is a 2 millimeter so again the nib is shaped in such a way that you can do with the same nib different thicknesses so let's see how that goes so you can go as thin as that and as thick as that which was which is thinner than the other one so this one will be still good for fine detailing I like to do metallic dots in my illustrations if you wanted to fill a larger area you would need to go with a bigger marker a bigger tip because this would scratch up the paper I'm quite likely to do that I like to work on uh, watercolor uh, cold pressed paper which has a lot of texture and bumps on there so if you needed to fill up a large-ish area with a marker that has this type of a tip the likelihood is it will start to scratch the paper up so you would need a bigger tip to make minimal um, moves or you know strokes on the paper I'm just going to make the swatch slightly bigger and you can see the areas where I overlapped a little bit the fiber is starting to be distressed so we're going to just do a small dot and a bigger one which is still quite small <laughs> which is good I do like small details you can see where I overlapped so now I'm going to go ahead, do a second strip of the watercolor, wait for it to dry and show you all of the swatches in a close-up. Okay, so things are almost dry and I think while they're still drying, I just wanted to point a couple of things out. In terms of the watercolors, the most opaque one was the Indian Summer and then closely followed by chocolate and rose gold and what I mean by opacity here is that can you see a bit of paper visible or coming through um, from these swatches so you can't say that about Indian summer also actually golden olive also quite a solid color it's still drying and it's got a little bit of color separation there so that might be an additional bonus uh, for some of you so that's that in terms of colors that I would um, highly recommend I'd go for the Indian summer rose gold I'm trying to really be quite sort of minimal um, chartreuse always port red burn sienna and I'd say Amazonas Light. The colors that I was a little bit disappointed with, um, I'd say metallic gold. To me, it doesn't look like a gold. It doesn't have much of a metallic sheen to it. So if you look at this color here, bronze, it's got a metallic sheen. This one almost looks flat. It hardly has anything. If I would use it, in the art that I showed you before the the sheen wouldn't come through so I would still use it but not as a metallic gold color and then the burgundy also surprisingly dried a lot a lot darker and more browner than red so I'm not I don't have enough red in this color I'd like a little bit more red avocado probably was the most disappointing color just because it just didn't look to me like an avocado color at all and also with water kind of goes into nothing so that's it um surprising colors the colors that i didn't expect um gold ochre really pretty really pretty muted orange bronze another one quite unique i'd say didn't expect it to look like that it almost has a little bit of rose gold and bronze mixed in one so a color I would pay attention to nice and golden olive 
that's also a bit of a surprise. So when I give you a close up, as it's still drying, you can see there's this sort of separation. Once it has dried, it kind of has a puddle of another color in there, almost looking very similar to either rose gold or orange, uh, golden orange. So something in there and excuse the uh, building noise outside and then I wanted to show you these lines that I have added so you can see with the line it looks really opaque and similar to Indian summer so you could build them up well hello I am back let's hope the noise isn't so where was I um the Indian summer you can see and the chocolate and the rose gold you can hardly see much of a difference on them just this angle shows a bit more but that's basically to say how very saturated they are including gold and olive as well and maybe you can see the golden olive here again as a close-up and the other colors Also, as I was waiting for the noise to go down, I, after a lot of um, trials, I managed to get the cap. I couldn't get it out of the, the tip, out of the cap. It just was stuck there for some reason. But somehow, after trying to pull it out with tweezers and trying to get some things in there, um, I just gave up and put the lid back on, screwed it quite tightly and that seems to have secured it and it's not coming off anymore although it doesn't look straight there's like a little gap here so it might be a little bit faulty i just hope it won't be uh, coming off um, later oh and it also makes a lot of mess when you try to push it in some of it comes out so yeah um, that's that and that is it for today I hope you enjoyed the haul and the swatching let me know what you think so let me know which colors did you like and you could see yourself adding to your palette the noise is coming back so thanks for watching and I will see you soon